about some uh, 20 minutes to the top of the hour. Thank you for staying on the AM show. Time now to discuss school feeding issues in the Ashanti region, particularly because caterers there are on strike. They say until government pays what it owes them, they aren't going to feed the children in public basic schools anymore. They also want an increase in the feeding grant per child from 97 pesos to three CDs. This morning I've been joined by a member of Parliament's uh, Education Committee, a very vocal one, as such, Clement Apak. Good morning to you, Mr. Apak, and thank you for joining the program this morning. Obviously, you are not surprised by this development, I'm sure, because it's been on the burner for a long time. We've been talking about the amount granted uh, a child to be a part of the school feeding program obviously because of the rise in the cost of goods and services over time. But what has your committee found out so far with regards to plans to increase this grant? And what more can you tell us about the concerns of these caterers in the Ashanti region? Well, let me say good morning to you and uh, good morning to viewers. And yes, you are right. I have spoken about the challenges facing the school feeding program on a rather regular basis, unfortunately. And it seems as though government has only been paying lip service to what I consider to be a very important intervention. In fact, the purpose of the school feeding program was to, one, ensure that People from less endowed backgrounds at least were guaranteed a meal a day at school to prevent them from going hungry. And indeed, in addition to that, it was also supposed to or is supposed to serve as a catalyst towards encouraging higher enrollment and retention as far as our public basic schools are concerned. Now, with this very noble objectives, one would have thought that a government that prides itself and claims to have a stellar record unsurpassed in the area of education would have mobilized the needed and requisite resources to ensure that such a program, as important as it is, ran smoothly. The issues are many, but let me take first the budgetary allocation for 2023 for the school feeding program. If you were to look at the 2023 budget appendix 6C, Hello, Doc. Hello, Dr. Park. Well, too bad. It appears uh, there's been a disconnection to Dr. Park's line. We'll try and rectify that. He was basically sharing uh, his thoughts on the development in the Ashanti region with, with us with regards to teachers, sorry, I beg your pardon, uh, caterers in the region who are demanding an increase on the grant and are on strike over on paid arrears. Um, Yesterday, if you were following the story, as of last night on our news, uh, there were reports about an incident between the Ashanti Regional Minister and some of the caterers who he said were chanting, and that made him unhappy. And so um, there was no proper meeting between the two, that's uh, the minister and the group. And, uh, well, we heard from one of the leaders who said well, she didn't see a problem, they were just airing their displeasure about what had happened. And so um, it was quite unfortunate that the minister, uh, based on the chance, decided not to continue with that engagement with the women. Uh, we will try and touch base with our men in the Ashanti region to find out what the situation is this morning. And um, even as pupils of public basic schools reopen ha have have the caterers softened their stance? 
Will they go and feed these kids after what happened yesterday? We are actually told that um, some of them have been paid um, as have been paid for the second term of of the last academic year, and so um, they should exercise patience because some of these things take take time. And and in one of the responses that we heard actually um, was that the caterers know they are supposed to pre-finance. Um, the feeding of the children and they will be paid subsequently and so we will be uh, trying to get all those answers and see what uh, the, the, the results will be especially for these children many of whom need this very important intervention uh, we are struggling with our lines this morning too bad uh, sorry about that we will try to rectify that we'll take a quick breather now hopefully when we come back the lines will be activated Some four minutes after nine, I'm grateful that you stayed and held on. Uh, we thankfully have been able to get another um, person to respond to or share his concerns about the school feeding issue in the Ashanti region. Unfortunately, we lost Dr. Clementa Park there. And we've been joined via Zoom by Kofi Asari. He is executive director of Ghana Education Watch, uh, Africa, I beg your pardon, Education Watch. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And I am sure, just like Mr. Apak, you're also not surprised about happenings in, in this sector with regards to school feeding. Uh, but this has been persistent. We've been talking about this over time. The caterers say they want an increment per child from 97 pesos to three CDs. And they're asking government to pay them all the arrears owed, or else the children who resume school today will have no food to eat. You've been following this for quite some time. Um, it's all money issues, right? And you've had concerns about the, the seeming focus on the free senior high school policy at the expense of other sectors of the education. How do we solve this problem once and for all? Well, um, good, good morning. Um, yeah, it's morning. Um, I, yeah, I appreciate the concerns being raised by the caterers. They are genuine and um, they are expected and long overdue. We've been seeing these wranglings taking place in the past two years. The reality is that the Ghana city, you know, has depreciated by over 80 to 100 percent in the past four years. Um, in the past year alone, it was about 50 percent. We know the inflation rate, food inflation is, is the highest. I mean, and it, it's been just around 50 percent. Uh, if you have to do an analysis of the infl um, inflation rate I mean, between 2018 and now on food, I'm sure it's going to be way over 100%, mm -hmm. way over. But we have a situation where school feeding caterers have been feeding students since 2018 with 97 pesos per day per child since 2018. So it tells you, I mean, the value of food. Mm -hmm. You know, the quality of food that can be produced with that amount of money. I quickly compared to the free senior high school because that's the only other school, uh, school feeding program we have, you know, um, in, within the pre tertiary space. I recall that around 2018, we were paying about four cities for free senior high school feeding a day. As we speak, we are, we are spending uh, more than six cities on, on free senior high school feeding a day. So we've seen at least 50% or more increments in how much we are spending in feeding, um, you know, senior high school students between 2018 and now. I think it's more than 50%. So why is it, why is it a challenge to increase the amount of money basic school students have been, you know, um, fed with? It, I, I, I don't get it. And what even makes the situation worse is that, I mean, what makes the situation uncertain is that in this year's budget, the Minister of Finance announced a 10% increment in the school feeding budget allocation. 
from 880 to 960 million. Now that 10% suggested that an average of 10% increment was gonna happen for the school feeding for program. Meaning that for 97 pesos, you were gonna get about 110, one, one CD 10 pesos, which, which was, so far as I'm concerned, you know, I mean, it was insignificant. It wouldn't do anything. Even that hasn't happened. Even that we are still, do, we are in month four and we are still doing 97 pesos. If you look at the medium term projection in the Ministry of Finance's budget presented last year, realize that the same amount of 969 million is projected for allocation in 2024. But when you get to 2025, it actually declines to about 770. It means that per the projections of the Ministry of Finance, allocation to the, to the Ghana School Feeding Program may reduce by 25% in 2025. It's within the medium term framework of this IMF program. Mm -hmm. And we have raised concerns last year, last week when we launched our impact of IMF program on education and policy brief at the University of Ghana, that school feeding will suffer if the medium term project projections of the Ministry of Finance per the 2023 budget as captured in the medium term expenditure framework is not reviewed. Because the meaning is that by 2025, if you are going to give school feeding program 25% less than what is currently being allocated to them, which is already inadequate, the only, the only meaning is that they are going to reduce the number of beneficiaries by 25%. That is a projection of the Minister, the minister of Finance in the medium term. And so, we have called for, uh, we have actually called for a review of the medium term expenditure framework of the Ministry of Finance to let the allocation to the school feeding program and other basic education lines reflect the realities. So such actions only speak to what has been, you know, approved per appropriation in a budget. And I think that we need to, uh, we need to revise the, the figure. Other than that, the quality of food we expect the children to enjoy will continue to diminish. It makes it difficult for CSOs like us to monitor the quality of the school feeding program because the last time we were monitoring school feeding, I was in Bongo, Bongo MA um, junior, um, primary. And I look at the food being served and um, you are quiet because, I mean, it's 97 pesos. So what else can you say? So I think that um, we, need to, we, we need to engage more with government for mm. government to increase um, the school feeding allocation within the medium term budget. As it is now, the caterers are shouting, yes, it is true, but the reality is that the budget hasn't made any allocation For an to solve their problem or right. give them three cities mm. a day. Mm. Um, Kofi, do you think when it comes to the interventions in the education sector, we are biting more than we can chew? Well, I, I, I think that the resource envelope within the resource envelope there is severe constriction um i don't know if we should say we are biting more than we can chew but i only say we are biting more than we can chew when government is allocating between 15 and 20 percent of the government's total expenditure to education at present we are doing 12 percent of total public expenditure to education that's one of the lowest in africa far lower than the international benchmark of 15% minimum and 20% maximum. We are doing only 3% of GDP to education. It's lower than the 4% to 6% recommended by, the, by UNESCO, for which our president is a, is a champion to ensure that all African countries comply. And so until we allocate according to the benchmarks that we have acceded to, uh, it will be difficult to, on the basis of this, say that we are biting more than we can chew. Mm. Having said that, even without the optimum budgetary allocation we expect. Yes, there are evidences of severe inequities in the allocation of education funds, which gives the impression that we, even though we are not biting more than we can chew, we are not spending efficiently and we are not um, adequately um, allocating resources. We are prioritizing secondary education and we are actually um denying basic education of its funding that is the fact the fact is that we are increasing how much we are spending in feeding senior high schools over the past four years we've increased that significantly okay but we haven't touched touched 
how much we are spending in feeding basic schools. Meanwhile, both caterers are spending, are buying food stuff from the same market. And so there is no way to explain this than simply present it as such that we are not spending equitably and that we have we are prioritized secondary education to the detriment of basic education. What government must do is that government must increase the budgetary allocation to basic education beyond 15% from the 12% we find ourselves in. And we see an opportunity in the medium, in the supplementary budget that the Ministry of Finance will present after the IMF board's approval, after the envisioning IMF board's approval of Ghana's program. If we don't take an opportunity and make amends by increasing allocation to basic education, which was actually cut by 40% in this year's budget, and increase allocation to the school feeding program to reflect the economic realities on the ground, um, then it will be difficult for us to manage critical interventions in the basic education space, you know, that are meant to um, encourage and sustain enrollment retention, promote teaching and learning, and also um, enhance transition of students from junior high schools and from primary schools to junior high schools. Interesting. So it, it appears that for now, the, 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 the caterers will have to stick with the 97 pesos per child, um, considering the, uh, what the budget has made room for. You see, sometimes when, we, when CSOs raise issues about budgeting, a lot of the stakeholders downplay budgeting, including parliament. There are a lot of issues emerging today that are being raised that could have been addressed if parliament rejected the budget that the Minister of Finance presented to the House. Because we encourage parliament that, look, the allocations to the education sector were totally inequitable and that they needed to reject that part of the appropriation. But the parliament passed a question, but let me give you an example. Last two weeks, I had the minority made a press conference um, calling for the release of capitation grants in the, to basic schools. Yes, it is true. Capitation grants are in areas for almost two years. You understand the tranches, almost, um, the tranches amount to almost two years of release. But the reality is that our parliament passed the appropriation bill which was more or less passing into law the budget estimates the Minister of Finance presented. In that budget estimate, okay, we all knew that the capitation grant, which we are now calling for, was only 15% allocated for. Let me put it this way. Only 15% of what was required as capitation grants for this year was actually budgeted. Mm. So how do you approve such a partially allocated or inadequate allocated capitation grants um, within the appropriation bill and then hold a press conference after three months and call government to release the capitation grant. Release what? Government only made allocation of for only about 11 or so million mm. out of about 80 million needed to pay the capitation uh, grant. And, so, and so if the caterers had any reason to fight, they should have done that prior to uh, the reading of the budget. Exactly. The same thing applies to the school feeding caterers because mm. our parliament sat down so, so that there was only a 10% increment in the allocation to the Ghana school feeding program. It's in the budget. They saw that the budget had already in, only increased from 880 to 996. Mm. And so it basically meant that in spite of all the inflation in the food sector, the maximum increment, if any, to guard school feeding interest was going to be 10%. They saw it and then they approved it. So, you see, when you complain now, more or less, it's like just crying was supposed to. Nothing mm. can be done. That's the, that's the reality. Mm. That's why I'm saying that in the supplementary budget of this year, which we are expecting, you know, sometime in June yeah. or so, we want to see our members of parliament scrutinizing the estimates before approving the budget. Other than that, we'll come back and cry wolf when we had an opportunity to, um, to ensure that the writing is done. Our the allocations for social intervention programs in the basic education sector must reflect, one, the economic realities, and two, the demands, the exigencies of providing quality basic education service, including school feeding program to children who require that level of nutrition to participate actively in, in learning in school. I'm grateful for your time this morning. Kofi Asari is Executive Director of Africa Education Watch, sharing his thoughts with us 
on the latest air with regards to the school feeding situation in the Ashanti region. Our men will be touching base with us later in subsequent bulletins to give us an idea of what is happening as the basic school pupils uh, for public schools reopen today. Well, it's now time to take a sip of water. Benjamin Akapo will join you shortly, and he'll be talking to Waylead Properties on their latest products to stay. <laughs> 